Hi, this is Nancy with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy, and I would like to welcome you to a Saturday afternoon YouTube Live video. Um, this video actually combines two of my favorite things. One, quilting, obviously. Two, painting. This is like the coolest technique for painting your own fabric. I think probably, probably the thing I like best is that when I make projects with these fabrics, they're mine and mine alone. Nobody else has the exact same fabric. Um, it also is kind of sort of, if you've ever worked with batiks, the cool thing about batiks is every inch of it is different. You know, there's no repeats in batiks. They're hand-dyed fabrics, um, very unique in themselves. But, and that's what these remind me of. I absolutely love doing this painting technique that I'm gonna show you. And the really cool thing about it is you don't have to be a painting artist to know how to figure out how to do these. I have to give credit where credit is due. My good friend Barb from joggles.com taught me all about these products and some of these she actually painted herself. We actually got together at a quilt market one time and um, did some of this and it was so cool and so fun. So Barb at joggles, J-O-G-G-L-E-S dot com. She's the one that introduced me to this and she also has a ton of videos on her own website. She does the most wonderful videos. If you're into mixed media at all, I highly recommend you go and see Barb's videos. Now she does a couple of times on fabric, but mostly Barb is gonna be doing these techniques on paper, into journal pages, onto um, watercolor paper, stuff like that. Very, very cool techniques, um, but for me, the excitement is that I get to do all those really fun techniques on fabric that then are turned into quilts. So I wanna, as always, start with a little quilt show. So this is the first one. So this one is the one that Barb did much of the painting of these um, pieces. So like these round ones, Barb actually did them. She lives in Rhode Island and then she sent them over to me and then I designed the quilt. This was very fun. Now, the um, painting on here was done with a Dilutions paint. The, that's not what we're gonna use today, but I wanna tell you what it is. And then the yellow and orange pieces, those were done by the, with a product called Dynaflow from Jacquard. Now, Jacquard has the most wonderful, I keep saying wonderful, don't I? The coolest paints and things for, um, Artists and artists of all kinds. I actually have a flyer around here at some point. I'll fi find it and show it to you. I love Jacquard's products. Dynaflow is not again what I'm going to demo today, but the idea of Dynaflow is this really fluid paint that is like a dye so it acts like a dye but it's not a dye it's a paint it's very cool and i'll do another video on that later so just so you know so this is the one quilt that i made with the ones that barb actually painted for me and then this is one that i painted all of these mostly myself there might have been some in here that barb had done that i had left over oh no and the crowd goes wild as everything falls there so this one's very fun because I painted all of these fabrics with the technique that I'm going to show you. And then I did improvisational piecing, which again is very, very cool. I took a class. I wish I could give credit where credit is due, but I don't know the lady, lady's name. It was a couple of years ago at an AQS show here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And she lives in France, but I don't think she was actually French. She makes the coolest quilts using this improvisational kind of piecing. And I loved this because not only the fabrics were all mine, but the technique, the piecing, the everything here. I created these. I didn't take this curve from anybody else. This curve is Nancy's curve. So when you learn improvisational piecing, that's when you truly can make I don't know, those art quilts pretty much. You know, you make an art quilt and an art quilt traditionally needs to be all your own idea. Not always your own fabrics, but the piecing. So that's my improvisational one. This is one that was really, really simple. When Barb came to the Grand Rapids show a couple years ago to vend at the AQS show, we needed to get some samples. So I threw this one together. 
These are using some of Barb's stencils and I'll show you some of those later. And then I did paint all of these. So these are painted um, with the gel press and the jacquard paints. And actually I think these are marabou paints now that I think of it. And then I put this together. And what I liked about this is that it was all the same stencil but then all different fabrics, or all different paints. So the colors changed, but the stencil was the same. So it kind of gave that continuity to the piece. This was really fun. All right. The last one is, there's actually four blocks in here, but I'm only gonna show you one. This one is one of the patterns that's commercially out there. And honestly, I don't know whose it is. Again, I didn't do my homework. I made the quilt and I don't know what happened to the, um, the pattern after that honestly but the idea here is that you can make traditional quilts so any of the normal kind of piecing quilts that you're making well you can do those with your own painted fabrics too which again makes that project your very own so here's a couple of other ones so this one I've showed you a couple of times because this is I'm gonna fling it here this is the one with all the little pieces and stuff that I've cut out with the Gemini. That's the electronic die cutting machine where I'm able to cut the triangles out right sides together. So, 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 so fun. I just did the video last weekend comparing the scan and cut, the Gemini, and the Big Shot. That's what that would have been. This would have been with the Gemini. So that one's not done. This is going to get a lot bigger. I just don't know when. I'll let you know when it's done don't know when it's going to be done and then this one I made today so when you look at this I painted these fabrics today I pieced it I quilted it and then I washed it and here's the reason why I wasn't a hundred percent positive that these paints would stay absolutely permanent on the fabric. I've made all of those quilts, but none of them have ever been washed before. So I was kind of going by hearsay that, you know what, these are permanent on fabrics, you can wash them, it'll all be good in the end, but I wasn't really positive. So I had to have a sample. So this will someday maybe turn into a, a doll quilt. At my guild, we actually make doll quilts for the Santa Claus girls. That's probably where this will end up. So I decided I need to try it and actually complete one to the end. So it doesn't have a binding, obviously, but these paint fabrics I painted Oh, not five hours ago. Pressed them to set the paint. Then I cut them, sewed them, pressed them, basted it, quilted it, and threw it in the wash. So within five hours of the fabric being painted, it was being washed. And that was the test I needed. I needed to know that it was not going to bleed, and they did not. You can look really close on these. There is no bleed on them. And I do love the different textures. Now these colors are kind of muted, but look at the textures, like, like the texture here. I don't know if you're seeing this or not, where I did different stamping and different stencils. And, and over here, I used a sponge to get different textures. I love that about this technique. So those are the samples that I made. Here's, oh, and then here's one. I'm gonna show you a couple of different techniques, but with this one, I want you to know I used no stencil. With this, I just used some circles to give me design. And then these are ones that I literally just did right before we started. I'm like, all right, Teresa, let me kind of tell you what I'm gonna do. And so these are the ones that I just made and I like making them sort of in a series. Do you see how these two go together? I'm going to show you how you do that, how you making one while you're making one, you're really making two and using some different products. Okay. Let's get these out of the way. Actually, I can just leave those there. I think. All right. So now I want to take you through the tools that I'm going to use. The first and most important is the gel press printing plate. This is my gel press of, of choice. There are other ones out there and many people will tell you, you can make your own out of gelatin. Yeah, the only thing I do in the kitchen is like microwave things. I'm not gonna spend much time in the kitchen making a gelatin plate. It's just not my cup of tea. 
when I can buy these. These are absolutely wonderful. They last for ever and they come in a variety of different sizes so this one is the big 12 by 12 later i'll use the 8 by 10 i really like that size too because of the size of stencils that i have but there are quite a few different sizes there's circles there's petites there's impressibles there's a lot of different sizes you can use when i'm using it i put it on my big square acrylic ruler because I have it. You see how it picks up, goes back down again? Because I happen to have an acrylic ruler in my studio all the time. That just works really nicely for me. Another, then the paints that I'll use. I will be using, I did just find it, Jacquard. So this is the paints that I'll be using. And this is a really cool little um, flyer that they have with all their stuff. So I'm just going to go into it a little bit. There's their dyes. They do have dyes. I can't remember the word. They're, they're acid dyes, some things that you can do for mixing your own, for dyeing your own fabric. But it's the paints that I'll be using today. The Liquitex, the um, Textile, and the Neopaque Neo are the ones that I'll be using. So Jacquard has a ton of different stuff. There's no end to what they have. So you could go to Jacquard's website. I know that they actually have a ton of really great videos using all of their different products also. But I don't think that they do one particularly with the gel press, but it's, it's out there. And the gel press, they have a lot of videos, but they don't really do it on fabric. So I'm kind of combining the two things that they do and putting it into one video. The other things that I'll be using, oh, so the, sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit. The Jacquard paints, like this is the Lumiere. Now the Lumiere paints have a little bit of shine to them. It's almost a pearlescence to them. I love that. I love it when a paint is shiny and sparkly and glittery. The textile paints are specifically made for fabric. All of these work great on fabric. And they don't have any shiny pigments in them. They're more of a matte finish. And then there is the Neopaque. These are the ones that you can use on a dark fabric and it won't show through. Um, I actually had one here somewhere, but I'll find it later. The paints come in three different sizes. The larger size like this, the, what size is this? I don't know what size this is. Um, two and a quarter ounces. So that's this one in the most common size. You can buy them in little packs of like eight of these together. And then there's the Exciter packs. What's really cool about the Exciter packs is you get to try out eight different colors in one little pack. These are just little half ounces, and you can really do quite a bit of painting with just those. And they've got them, um, this one's the textile, this one is the um, Lumiere and the Neopaque together. So they've got a couple of different sizes of these kind of exciter packs too. So if you wanna try this technique, this would be the way I'd recommend doing is that you buy these little exciter packs. They're, I don't know, less than 18 bucks each, okay? Other tools that I'll use is a brayer. You use different brayers to spread it out. I'll show you that. There are stencils. Now, my stencil of choice are gonna come from Joggles. Oh my goodness, almost like you think I wasn't organized at all, right? So, here. These are some of my favorite ones. So joggles.com, that's my friend Barb's website where there's all the mixed media and she's got a wonderful line of stencils, some really, really cool ones. This one in particular with the feathers, she created thinking about quilters because we like doing our feathers. So she has that going for her. And then I also like some of these bigger ones like this. So this one, let me see if I can find the, I think goes with this design, but it's from the Crafters Workshop and the designer is Julie Belzar. She does really cool work. She does a lot of different things with a lot of different companies, but this one in particular is from the Crafters Workshop. And that's the one I'm gonna work with, or the big one that I'm gonna work, that I just did that one with. 
other tools that I use. This is my little toolbox up here. Wet wipes. Can't have enough wet wipes. You're going to get make a mess no matter what you do, but having wet wipes ain't nearby. This is a new squeegee from Ranger so that you can little dips on your um, paint. I'll show you that. This is a texture plate from, the company is called Carabelle. Um, I think they're in France. Um, they're, you can probably find these at any like scrapbook store or art supply kind of a store. So they've got a couple of different things. They've got texture plates, so that's what this is. It's not a sticky stamp, it's just a texture plate. And you'll see how I'll be able to just put it down and get textures. But then they also have stamps. And so this is one that I just got the other day. This is one of their stamps, and look what it's stuck on. It's stuck on a piece of acrylic. Well, I'm a quilter. I have acrylic rulers. I didn't need to go and buy an acrylic plate for this. I just used one of the acrylic rulers that I had. So you can use stamps when you're working on these. Here's some other textures that I found. This is a netting. You can use things like this to get texture. This is a sponge, so any sea sponge where you can bop down onto it again to get some textures. This is hand sanitizer. <laughs> hand sanitizer, if you choose, and that's a big if, you choose to clean off your plate when you're done, you do it with hand sanitizer. I say the if because you don't gotta. You do not have to clean it off of the paint. You take your, your last print and you can leave it like that. And if you get little bits of it to show up on the next one, that's called the golden rule. I mean, you're going to get some good stuff from what's left behind. We like that. Okay. Um, oh, these things like this. This straw is going to give me some texture. This cap is what gave the circles on that one piece that I showed you. Um... A palette knife. Oh, not that palette knife. I've got a cleaner one, hopefully, around here. Okay, or I go back to the toolbox. Okay, Teresa, we had a palette knife, didn't we? <laughs> okay, here's a cleaner one. Yeah. Okay, we're going to need a palette knife to get our paint out with. I've got a variety of brayers up here. You just want a nice, hard brayer. All right, I think that's it. Oh, and then a couple of other paints that I'm going to show you. Liquitex is more of a high-end paint company um, for more higher-end artists than I obviously am. They make this, it's a um, iridescent medium. That means you take a matte finish paint and you turn it into a shiny paint. Bonus. These are a spray. This is from a company, a German company, these called Marabou. They've got fashion sprays and fashion shimmer. They also make some other paints along the way, um, but these are the products of theirs that I generally like very, very much. And then this is one that's brand new. This is Eye Zinc. This is a glitter paint made in France. I just got this from Barb at joggles.com just the other day. She did a couple of really cool videos on them. Um, and I'm gonna, I just did what the, the ones that we did here with it. And Teresa and I were like, oh yeah, that's good, that's good. Very, very shiny and glittery kind of stuff. All right, so I've gone through the tools. Oh, last set of tools is paper. You need some scratch paper off here to the side. so. I just, you know, all the boo-boos that I make at work on the printer, I just grab those papers and I stash them up and then I bring them home to have for my scratch paper. Um, and I'll tell you what I do with that. All right, so we are ready to begin. I am going to work, generally speaking, with two colors of paint. So I'm going to use this pink Lumiere and this purple. Pink and purple, that's golden. Oh! How about, a, no, okay, just those, okay. I get excited, I, mean, I want to use them all at once, but if you use them all at once, you have mud. So you want to try to use colors that are um, very close in the color wheel, like a pink and a purple are going to be close in a color wheel, or things that are complementary, and I'll talk to you about the complementary here in a little bit. So I'm going to first start with these two paints. I'm going to take the paint, open it up, and then I'm going to use my 
palette knife and I'm gonna put some paint down on the palette. Now I like to do where it's kind of ombre from one to the next just because I like to do it. Oops, he told you we'd need our wet wipes. Wipe that off because I don't want to get any of the purple paint into my pink paint bucket. Oh, this is a brand new one. When I have a brand new one, I take that, and then I take that and I clean it off onto the plate. Stir it up a little bit. Oops, I got a little bit of paint on the outside. I am such a mess. How do I make it through the day without somebody cleaning up after me? Thank you, Louisa. Okay. Clean that up. There. Right. Now I'm going to use my brayer. Right. And I usually will start braying on the light color and then go to the darker color. So I'm just going to bray this out so that it's coming out nice and smooth. I want to fill the um, entire plate. And then as I get to the purple, I want to bring it back to the pink a little bit so that those two are blending together and then go to the purple. So I'm gonna do the most basic form of mono printing first, okay? So the idea with mono printing is first you have this gushy little surface. You add paint to it. So this is what the scratch paper is for. Come over here onto the side and roll off your brayer so that the paint is not thick on it. After you put paint onto your surface, the next thing you want to do is to imprint on it with something, whatever you happen to have. So I like this little circle guy. He does fun little things. I like this big one. So I'm just adding an impression to the plate. So you put paint on, you take paint off in whatever way you like, and then you pick it up. And I'm going to pick it up with fabric. So the fabric I'm using is just a white muslin. Nothing, it is a high quality muslin, but it's just a nice white muslin. You can do it with other colors. Here I've done it on a solid yellow fabric. I just took the rings and actually printed it on them. You do not have to have special fabric. And no, I did not pre-wash the fabric. Yeah, that probably isn't what you think I was going to say, but I did not. I, I washed that other one. I did the, the other ones. They all turned out great. Again, I'm not going to do anything that takes extra time. My choice. People might want to pre-wash it. I don't, and that's okay. Now, when you're working with fabric, you want to leave the fabric on the plate a little bit longer than if you were doing paper. So when you're doing paper, you kind of put it down, you peel it up, you're done. With fabric, you want it to get into the fibers. So I'm just going to rub it and rub it and rub it. And then peel it up. You see all those circles I got? And then look at the leftover glittery green from the last thing that I had printed. Now it is on this one, all right? So I love that. I love the eclecticness of it, all those things happening. Now I want you to watch this a second. Let's say you're not that person. You're not that person that is okay with the green glitter just got on your purple fabric. I'm not okay with that. That's what this comes in for. This is the, san the um, hand sanitizer. I put it on, I spread it out with my brayer. I have no idea why hand sanitizer does what it does on this, but it makes all the extra paint come up. Rub it on, before I'm gonna clean off my brayer. And I'm showing you this now because I'm not gonna do this again. Uh, I'm gonna grab just an extra piece of fabric and I'm just going to wipe it up. And it's going to all come off, even the green glitter. I got to work a little bit on the green glitter to get it up there, but it is coming up. Now, this is for you, those of you that do not want 
leftover paint on the new one that you're making. You can clean off your mat like this. That'll be the last time you'll ever see me do it. I never clean them off. I just keep painting and painting and painting. At the end of the day, I'm done. I take as much paint off with my last print and then I move on to my next one. So there you go. If you wanna take it off, you can. There. All right, well, I wanna do another one using some of the sprays this time. So this time, I'm going to use, gotta put my caps back on. I'm gonna use, this Mars Red, never used this one. Oh, I guess I have used it before. I don't remember using this one before. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna put down my paint just like before. And this time I'm just gonna use this color because I'm gonna use some of that glitter that I just got, that was I just opened today. It was very, very exciting. So with the Mars Red, I'm going to use this, uh, no, I'm going to use this. This is kind of a, I don't know, a bronzy kind of a color. Um, just pretty, but look at this. This top just comes off. And then I'm just going to squeeze it down onto my surface. So when I saw Barb first demo this, the first thing, I literally wrote her right away. And I'm like, um, is that permanent on fabric? And she says, yes. And I'm like, golden words to me. I love that. Okay. So I'm going to take this, get myself a new piece of scratch paper, and I'm going to blend this in. So my hope is that that um, glitter, here, my hope, because you know I've not done this one yet, so we all get to mess up together, is that the glitter, yeah, will spread out with that Mars Red paint. All right, really, it's just exactly what I planned. Uh-huh, for somebody that doesn't plan, that's pretty good. Okay, getting it all blended in there. There. This time, I'm going to use a stencil. So I'm going to use this kind of funky window glass stencil. I'm going to put this down, and this is why I like the 12 by 12 stencils for when I'm using my 12 by 12 plates. Then I'm going to take some fabric. I'm going to kind of make three out of this one. I'm going to take some fabric, lay it down, and lightly rub over it. Pick some of the paint up. I don't want to pick it all up, but I want to pick some of it up. So there's that picked up, and I'll do something else with that in a second. Now I'm going to take another piece of fabric. Got these all pre-cut out and pressed. You want to make sure that they're pressed. You don't want any wrinkles in them. Okay. Now I'm going to take off the stencil, and I'm going to put the stencil on this piece of fabric. I'm going to get a piece of paper just get that to stick down onto the fabric while I do my next thing over here. So it's kind of nice if you ever spray on stencils, you like the stencil to be stuck onto your um, fabric or even whatever surface you're using. So that paint actually does that for me. Now I'm going to go back to this piece. I'm going to pick up what I impressed on here. Rub that all in. Okay, again, I want to rub it really nice because it's fabric and I want the fabric to pick up uh, as, as much of the paint as possible. All right, now I'm going to go back to this one. Now remember, we have a red kind of a um, paint on that. Can you see this? Am I got stuff in the way? All right, this one I have the leftover paint that was on the bottom of that. Now I'm going to take the Fashion Spray from Marabou. I'm going to take two colors and I'm going to spray. A little bit more of that maybe. And there. Okay. There. That'll do it. Then I take some scratch paper again. Pick up some of that overspray that's on top. What a mess. 
Anyway, <laughs> all right. You want to clean up your your studio just so you can make a mess in your studio with stuff like this. But it's so fun. All right, I'm gonna pick up just enough of that so that it's not sloppy all over. Ooh, now that's kind of pretty. I should have done that on that. Okay, next time. Okay. Now I'm gonna pick this up. This has not as much of the red glitter as I thought I would get. Put that, fling that in front of you. That has a little bit of the red paint. That, not that much actually came down on this one as came on when I did the other one. But now I'll lift this up and this should have the red and the design and the glitter on it. there. So I like that one. I guess I wished I'd used a second color with the red. And over here, do you see where there's nothing there? That means that I actually took too much of the paint out when I got this impression off of it. So live and learn. You try different things and you get different results from it. So that one's okay. I'm not in love with that one. Um, but we are going to put this away now. So now I'm going to put away the 12 by 12. I do want to get that ink off my acrylic. All right, I'm going to move this over here. Now I'm going to use the 8 by 10. All right, I like the 8 by 10 quite a bit just because it's a smaller piece. I'm not having to manipulate so much paint at one time, just a smaller piece. But I like the 12 by 12s because then I get a bigger piece of fabric to do things with. So live and learn. You'll like whatever you like doing. Okay. All right. So again, I'm going to take some paint. This time I'm going to do turquoise and how about turquoise and silver together? That could be pretty. Again, these are, oh, no, no, no. You know what? Turquoise. Yeah, okay. All right. So a turquoise and a silver. This again is a brand new one. Mix it up there a little bit. Yeah, I've got some leftover stuff on my plate from last time. Keep in mind, I always could just pick it up and use the backside of it too. So some people will use the backside when they want that really clean print. And then the people like me that just don't, you know, I'm okay with them mixing, I'll just keep them together. So I'm gonna use some of that silver off that and then toss my cap. Then get, I need a little bit more silver on there. Then get a little bit of turquoise. Now I get my brayer. I spread out my light color first. And then come over to pick up the turquoise. You know what? I think I want more silver. I don't think I have quite enough silver paint on there. Let me get a little bit more. Thinking if I can see through it, I probably don't have enough. Oops, now I got turquoise over there. Didn't mean to do that. Oh well. The concern in my voice is frightening, isn't it? Yeah. All right, spread my paint first. Now I'm gonna use a stencil. I'm gonna use this feather stencil from joggles.com. She's made her stencils nine by 11, so they fit, fit perfectly. Then I'm going to take this netting, I'm going to lay the netting over top, take my paper, and so I'm taking off the paint through the netting, which is going to leave a texture of the netting through the holes. Oh, it didn't come up very much. I need to press a little bit harder. Hold on a second. I want there to get enough of the netting on there to get an impression of it. There. Okay. Then take the netting up, pick up the stencil. Again, I could put this on a piece of fabric. I'm not gonna just because we gotta get moving, all right? Get a piece of fabric. Lay it down. Give it some time to pick up. Okay. 
don't quite pick up. I think I'm getting my paint a little bit dry. You gotta kind of work fast with this. Nope, it's the paint got too dry. All right, we're gonna do it again with the turquoise, but we're gonna do something else too. So I'm gonna put the turquoise down and the silver, just like before. But this time I'm gonna add a medium to it. And the medium I'm gonna add is the iridescent medium from Liquitex. And that'll make everything a little bit more fluid. Here it is. Whoops. Because we need to have a little bit more fluidity on this. There. I might just put that same piece of fabric down again. We'll see. Oops. I can see a little fiber in there. I want to get that out of the way. All the way to the edges. It's a little bit thick on this side. Can take it over to the other side. Roll off some of that. I got too much on there now. stencil, put down the netting, piece of paper to pick up some of the extra stuff and to leave the impression of the netting on there. Pick that up, that up. Let's try again. actually see the paint coming into the fabric this time. I think it was just too dry last time. I must have had, I don't know what I did, honestly. You know, truth is, is I'll take this piece that didn't get so much going on it, and I'll add something to it next time. I'll Maybe I'll lay the other stencil on it next time to get more um, color on it. A lot of times I'll add different, I don't know if I've got one over here, but sometimes I'll just keep adding to it and adding to it until I like it. Um, I'll show you what I mean by that with these impressionable stamps. There. There, that's better. So now you can see that impression that was left by the netting right there. So just adding, putting paint down, putting something on to give it design and then to pick it up. All right, we're going to do now something with a darker color. I don't want to totally freak out on my colors here. I'm just going to use a violet. How many minutes? 40. Athena says we're on 40 minutes. That means I better start moving, right? Okay, where is it? Okay, palette, we're going to do one more on here because I want to show you how you would use these um, stamps on it also, okay? Somebody asked if a brayer would work instead of using your hands. Um, sometimes I do do that. Um, it depends on whether I think my brayer is clean. Because <laughs> sometimes my brayer isn't as clean, and then I'll be putting paint on the backside, which I guess that wouldn't be a problem anyway, would it? All right, so let's spread this out. This time, I want to do the impression with the stamp or the texture plates. Whatever it takes to get a different design out, but always remember to clean off your brayer as best you can, okay? So these are, there, okay, so I'm gonna use this stamp. So this is one of the stamps. If you're a paper crafter, you have stamps. Just stamp it down. Ooh, and you know how I said I could just add things? I'm gonna add, oh, I'm gonna add it to this. I'm gonna take this turquoise one can you see? Gonna pick it up. Now I'm gonna put it down on that one. So add design to one that you think is maybe just not as cool as you think it could be. Okay, one more. All right, now I really love that one. Okay, 
So now I've got more color on that one. Now I'm going to take fabric. So the impression that I get this time is from the stamps. Ooh, you know, well, there's a little flicky thing on there. All right, this time, just because somebody mentioned it, I'll do it with my hands first, and then I'll do it with my stent, my brayer. Yeah, I got a little bit of, not a big deal. It's on the back side, I guess, anyway. Yeah, the brayer is picking up the fabric in some places. And I think I'm going to stick with my hands. Good idea, though. Thanks for the suggestion. <laughs> All right. All right, I really like this one. There you go. With all the purples and the stamps. So, so many different products that I showed you today. We've got the gel press printing plates. We've got paints from Jacquard that will stay for a very, they'll last, I don't know, nigh on to forever if you keep their tops on and you keep them sat up straight like this. The, um... Liquitex Iridescent Medium, the Eye Zinc Glitter from Joggles.com, the Marabou's Fashion Spray, the Marabou Fashion Sprays and Glitters, you can also buy those on Joggles.com, um, the gel plates you can get on Joggles.com, and you can get them on QuiltingWarehouse.com, the Liquitex Paints, I believe you can get those on Quilting Warehouse, I'm not sure if she has them at Joggles.com, um, and then the Carabelle stamps and impression stamps, those you can get on joggles.com. So here's the thing. I know that I'm not going to get all those links in there for you to go, oh, I want that product and that product and that product. As I told somebody the other day, my gifts are talking and quilting. My gifts are not technical things. I'm just telling you where you can get these kind of products. If it comes down to it and you cannot find the products that you're looking for, it would be best if you did not leave a comment on the YouTube channel saying, I can't find that product. It would be best if you email me. If you email me at quilting, no, yeah, quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com, I promise you, I will find some place where you can get these products. If you have gone to your local quilt shop and craft store and you can't find them, you've gone onto the websites that I've provided and you can't find them, trust me, I can find them for you. But it's best if you were to email me at quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. This video you could see a hundred million more times if you wanted to by going to our YouTube channel, which is on point dash TV. Um, there is a lot of other videos on, Barb does a lot of um, videos with these kinds of products, but on paper, on the joggles also. Please subscribe to our channel. I hope you really liked watching it. I know this was a long one, but it's a dreary Saturday afternoon in Michigan, so really I had nothing better to do than to teach you how to paint on fabric with the gel press and jacquard paints. I hope you have a great day.